Okay, so today we are here to um, present a bit the, the university with this uh, specific period and um, we are going to uh, start by presenting who are our panelists. Uh, Diana, for the moment, uh, good morning, Alan. Uh, good morning, thank you for opening this chat. Uh, I don't still have the, the mouse uh, available for me, but never mind. Yes, uh, you have. Yes, okay. So, uh, let's first present the panelist, okay? So, I am Patrice Sargenti. I am in charge of the bachelor program. I am the director of the program. And um, I am as well a professor at the University of Monaco. My field is IT. We are going to have uh, Marine Giannini speaking as well today. She is in charge of the career services and alumni. Uh, so she is the one which is uh, making the link between the students and the professional world when they are here. And then she still continues the link with the professional world. Good morning, Marine. Marine. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, then we have with us Diana Shatari. Diana, good morning. She is in charge of the Hello. admissions. Hello. Morning, Hello. Diana. Hello. And then we have Jeanne Marie, uh, which is uh, in charge of the student services. So she's going to explain to you a bit how all the services we are going to provide you uh, before coming, while coming, after being here, and uh, maybe as well uh, after finishing. Okay. Hello. But Hello, Jeanne-Marie. So, uh, we will start by the general presentation of the university, then Marine is going to speak about uh, the career services, and now about the admissions, and Jeanne-Marie about the student services. Okay, so let's, part, let's start by the, the, the presentation of the university itself. Uh, we are going to speak quickly about the figures, the accreditations, the pedagogy philosophy, which is very important for us as a professor, and uh, then we'll go into the details of the bachelor program. We always start the presentation and the open doors by presenting the mission statement of the university. The university um, describes in its mission statement exactly what we are, and uh, by reading that, normally you should be able to understand completely who we are. Of course, we are not going to go into details because it's going to take too long, but uh, we have to start by the beginning of the mission. It's important to start by the first word. IOM aims to educate. So the first goal of the University of Monaco is to educate. There are two um, institutions of higher education, research-based or education-based. We are a research-based higher educational institution. So we are here to educate. Uh, we, are, we want to educate responsible business leader, and here again, it's very important uh, in this, uh, this, these little words because we have responsible and we have business leader. Responsible is part of, uh, you know, tomorrow uh, key factors. Uh, being responsible means being, you know, aware of uh, sustainability, being aware of business ethics, uh, empathy. Uh, management of people leads to responsibilities and then uh, being responsible in this uh, area are very very important these are uh, of course not technical skills uh, that uh, we, we will inject but more uh, soft skills and of course you are leading to become soon or uh, late a leader you are going to manage something, manage a product, manage a department, manage a team, manage a company, okay, in an international setup. So this is the one of the key words. If we go on the second paragraph of our mission statement, we can see that um, we highlighted a few words which are really uh, describing who we are. Uh, first of all, we are small. We are a very, very small institution, but very, very multicultural, okay? And very connected. Sorry for the little delay, but yes, we are connected. And these days, uh, we are even more connected than usual, okay? This entrepreneurial spirit is there. Is there in the DNA of the institution, in the DNA of the students? Being entrepreneur does not only mean that you will create a company, even though that it is quite common that students 
even during the first year or the second year of their studies, um, they already start their business. But being entrepreneur means being active, proactive of their own academic path. And that's important. Mm, if you want things to happen, make it happen. This is this entrepreneurial spirit that we would like to foster uh, in the facilities in, during your studies at IUL. And then the next word here is as well very, very important. Uh, collaborative work is super important for me. Uh, I would like everybody to help each other. Uh, in, in the world when you will work, there is no way you will work alone and you will succeed achieving very high goals on your own, okay? You will have to work collaboratively with other people. So let's start now. Let's start at the university from day one. Uh, the competition is here when it has to be constructive, but it is very, very important that you, you are collaborative. Uh, for example, my Americans, of course, they are very good uh, in English, but uh, sometimes in quantitative skills, they are not particularly good. But the French, which are unfortunately a bit less uh, gifted in English, as you can hear, they sometimes have very good skills in English, uh, in, in mathematics. So everybody can help each other. And uh, the idea is that I have 100 students that start. I would like to have these 100 students arriving at the end. Uh, of course, it is not exactly the case, but uh, the idea is that we put everything and we try to put everything in place to make it happen. That's the idea. And having students collaborating each other, helping each other is one of the key factors that leads to success. Uh, the mutual understanding is another point. You know, we have a very, very high international okay. population, very diverse. Uh, so it is very important to be open-minded and to understand each other. This mutual understanding and this international uh, population is as well present in the faculty and the staff members. So it is important that, you know, you approach everybody, uh, your friends, your professor, your administrative tasks, with this, uh, you know, open mind and which is needed for, uh, you know, injecting the cross-cultural differences into your life. And this leads to a very, very, very interesting uh, global perspectives for your career because uh, having faced all these different nationalities, I'm going to speak about that a bit later, you, during your studies, you are definitely ready for your career. Okay, the next paragraph is about research. I'm not going to go very uh, in detail about this part, but we have field of expertise here at the University of Monaco. We, have, we are expert in luxury management, we are expert in finance, in sport management, and in entrepreneurial. And our researchers are uh, definitely working and doing their research in this particular field, injecting as well a bit of CSR and sustainability because, of course, this is one of the, and these days it's even more important, uh, one of the key factors as well of the principality of Monaco. Okay, and finally, we are part of the INSEC group. The INSEC group is, uh, you know, one of the biggest higher institution in France uh, of education. And, um, and we are part, of course, of the attractivity of Monaco. Ah, okay. So, uh, if we want to speak a bit about some figures. Okay. So the University of Monaco has been created in 1986. So we are a bit more than 30 years old. Uh, so we are young for an institution. So our programs ranges from the bachelor, masters, MBAs, and DBAs. DBAs being the doctorate. We have 650 students, 50-50, a bit more women these days. And uh, we have more than 80 nationalities in our student population. And this is very, very specific. The, the biggest population is French population and it is only 20% of the students. So there is no dominating nationality at all. 80 nationality uh, within 650 students, it's very, very, very diverse. And that's one of the key elements of uh, IOM and what will make your experience a bit different when you come to Monaco. Monaco is a two square kilometer uh, country, town, and we are used to say that it is as well our two square kilometers campus. Uh, our alumni population is a small 3,300 alumni, but they are really in more than 100 different countries. 
In terms of teaching, the students are facing, uh, you know, our full-time faculty, which are uh, all doctorates, and um, uh, we have around 28 full-time faculty, uh, but we have as well uh, more than 100 adjunct faculties. The idea is that a bachelor students will have class, one third of their class uh, taught by uh, doctors, researchers, you know, people that are active in research and really academicians in order to inject the theory and the foundations. But two thirds of their, uh, you know, class hours are in front of professionals. Okay, that means that uh, the professionals will bring in the class the real world, you know, the reality of their experience. The, for example, the brand management class is, called by, is taught by Luca. And Luca is uh, one of our you know, professors since a long, long time, but he's a brand manager and he worked for Ferrero, for example. So when he teaches brand management, of course, he will bring you know, his own experiences. Practitioners as well are used to bring their friend in class. And their friend usually are, are their clients or uh, their providers. And these people are bringing as well with them projects, real projects for the real life. And that puts all the class down to earth, but with very high as well expectations in terms of quality of delivery. And that's important. Our university is accredited by the association of AMBA, and we are as well part of the INSEAD group. We already mentioned that. We have brand new facilities. Of course, these days, uh, you see, this is my son runes, so it's not exactly what we were expecting for this open day today, but I'm sure we will be able to join the facility soon. Um, we have, uh, as you can see, this is a wide building, brand new, created by the principality uh, for us. We are uh, using the first two floors, and uh, we have uh, 16 rooms, 500 seats, and uh, two computer labs, uh, students' lounge, a cafeteria. So uh, these are some of the pictures that we are using and that uh, we took this year. Uh, we are here now since uh, September. Students are very happy with the new facilities. It's the, the, the good part. Uh, to move on a bit with the second edu educational philosophy, we are used to say that um, this philosophy is uh, sustained by five pillars. Uh, and some of them, we already covered them. There is a big balance between the theory and application, and this is you understood, with the practitioners coming as well in class, you know, they bring the real life, and the PhD and the researcher are, you know, more using the theoretical and injecting the theoretical background needed to understand uh, theory in general. Uh, the cooperation and the collaboration is part of it, uh, the second pillar. Uh, I'm used to say that, uh, you know, we have tutoring system, our second year students are here to help the first year. We have this uh, open door policy with, uh, you know, the faculty and myself as well. Even now that we are remote, uh, we have, I have open doors policy and uh, students can come and speak to me uh, three times a week. Uh, so it is important that uh, this collaboration uh, help the students, you know, to learn how to work in team on a multicultural context as well. It's important. And to, uh, you know, help everybody to go and to reach the end. This multicultural learning, uh, just to add a little word on that, it's uh, clearly something that is done in class, okay? And when we have, you know, this business ethics class or sustainability, sustainable development and green business class in a class of 25, and in this 25 class students' classroom, we have 15 different nationality, people coming from Asia, from Eastern Europe, from Canada, from South America and some European, even within the European, the German and the Italian, they have different vision of uh, the, the conception of the world. And, um, you know, the professor is here to, uh, to foster the dynamic uh, of the discussion, but this multicultural learning is de definitely generated uh, in classroom within the, the, the student population, thanks to the diversity of this population. The final pillars before we, we finish with the individual attention is the active learning. We are following this, uh, you know, uh, flip class uh, method, uh, more American pedagogy, a lot of group, a lot of presentation, a lot of projects. Uh, students need to be a bit proactive in the way they are, they are, they are learning. Uh, so and it's linked to experiential education as well. So we really, um, you know, try to ask 
these students to behave a bit like uh, they will have to behave later on when they will be in the business world. Some little things very concrete, uh, keeping the deadlines uh, and trying to, you know, forecast a bit what will be next step, understanding a bit in advance what should be the, the, the problems that should come. I always say to my students, uh, they come to see me uh, before you have a problem. If you know that you are going to face an issue uh, before the issue arrives, come to me. And then there is no problem that won't have a solution. Okay, so we will normally always find a solution. And if we found the solution before the issue arrives, then it is not a problem anymore. Okay, so that's the idea yeah? being a bit proactive. And of course, as you will see in these uh, five pillars, the, the individual attention is very important. The student is at the center of the attention. We have our office hours, professors are here four days a week uh, with, uh, you know, uh, compulsory uh, office hours. Students can go during these office hours to see the professors without taking an appointment. And of course, if uh, they have class during these times, they can take an appointment and there is no way a professor will refuse uh, whatever interaction with the students and usually it goes well. Okay, uh, let's continue with uh, the program. So slowly now we were at the institution level and we are going down to the program itself. Uh, so we have a bachelor program, a bachelor in business administration with different specialties. We have a master of science, uh, we have several master of science in luxury, in marketing, in finance, in sport business management, and we have uh, in, and in, in entrepreneurial, international management. We have an MBA, so the MBA is a master of business administration, but this one is more, you know, for people that have a professional experience. So you need three to five years of professional experience to join the MBA. And finally, we have a doctorate, so the DBA. So these are the portfolio of a degree that you can get at the International University of Guanaco. And now we will go, uh, in, in before going to the bachelor, we are going to speak a bit about recognitions. So we are accredited by AMBA, the uh, accreditation of MBA program since 2005, and the last one was in 2016. We are going to have a renewal soon. Uh, ASCSB uh, is, uh, we are the, in the final stage of the ASCSB accreditation. We have every five years the recognition of the government, so the visa from the Monegasque government with an audit uh, from the FNEJ, which is uh, you know, a French uh, auditing system for Grande École in France. And in terms of uh, recognition in general, so you can see that we are ranked in The Economist. Uh, this year we are 71 uh, in the top 100. Uh, to be honest, I am quite uh, proud of this achievement uh, because it's a top 100 list for uh, uh, around 5,000 MBA in the world. We are uh, 71 and in this same page, uh, we are with uh, you know Stanford, uh, Harvard and a lot of very well-known um, universities. So we are at a certain level. To be honest, we have another ranking, the CNN expansion, where we are 65. And now we are going to go into the detail of the bachelor program. Okay, the bachelor program is a three year degree, uh, which is delivered in three years. Uh, we have the first year at IOM in Monaco, uh, and there is two intake, one in September and one in January. Uh, during the summer, you can do an internship. Uh, during the second year, we are going to go a bit deeper into the functional knowledge and uh, we speak about interna international experience because there is one term at IOM in fall or in spring, the one you choose, and the other term, you go abroad for an international experience in uh, one of our partner university or in, uh, in one of our uh, campuses in Paris and London and San Francisco with uh, with the insect group. During the third year, uh, you choose your specialization, and the specialization, I'm gonna list them after, uh, is one term of class in fall, and you finish with a long internship in spring. The bachelor degree is 90 US credit, which is the equivalent of 180 ECTS credit. Uh, we have on our tracks. Uh, that means that you can join and reach the, the, the four year bachelor degree in three years, which is worth then 120 US credit. This is the format of the bachelor uh, in the United States. 
Okay, uh, so in the United States, the bachelor is 120 US credits, and you need it to join uh, a master in the US. So we kept this um, this uh, four-year degree. Originally, yeah, our bachelor was a four-year degree one, of course, uh, but with a Bologna agreement and to try to be a bit more homogeneous with Europe, we, we, we shrink it down to 90 US credits, but we kept. Uh, the honors track as an option for the best students because we decided to to put it into three years so uh, then uh, students need to push a bit more they have additional classes to um, to reach this honors track but the advantages of the honors track is that for uh, only a few amount more you save one full year of studies if you wanted to start uh, you know a master in the us with the european degree the 90 us credits uh, bachelor you need to do one year in the in the in one of the university in america and uh, of course it's completely another amount so uh, the bachelor is organized around half of the courses uh, that are common to everybody there is uh, two tracks a business management and a marketing and communication track that you have to choose before coming so it's only a little uh, flavor that you give from the beginning of your studies and then uh, during the third year you choose uh, your specialization uh, alan i think you are here so alan is one of our students um, he is in the first year uh, of studies uh, alan you are in which track good morning everybody yeah thank you mr Genty. as you said um I'm the first year uh, bachelor student and I'm in the management track at the moment. Um, and I chose the management track because I had previous experience in marketing before I came to IUM. So I wanted to choose for the management track to broaden my range of knowledge. So, um, yeah. And uh, what is the specialization you target for your third year? My third year? Uh, uh, actually, um, I don't know yet completely. I know in the first year, um, you do get an introduction and broad sense of all the different courses available at IUM. So this allows you to discover what you like. And so you can choose your specialization. But um, I don't know yet, personally, I'm like leaning either like uh, management or finance. So um, yeah, but good. Thank you, Alan. Um, we may come back to you later on for additional questions. Uh, thank you very much. So you saw that uh, there are uh, six specializations uh, uh, for the third year, uh, particularly um, the luxury. So they are, they are matching our master degree, in fact. Uh, so we have the global business management, which is uh, with a flavor of entrepreneurship and innovation management. We have this communication and event management, which is the continuity of the marketing and communication track, of course. So the specificity is to maybe organize events and, uh, you know, maybe be a bit more in the digital marketing area. Luxury marketing, sales and services is definitely one step before, you know, our masters in luxury, which are very, very well known. Uh, so you, you start getting a flavor of, uh, of this industry, which is really specific. And uh, the way we manage and we operate in this industry is uh, as well uh, specific. Sport business management, definitely uh, matching with the principality of Monaco. Our students in the sport business management are, you know, participating to sports events, Monaco Grand Prix, the tennis, uh, Rolex Master, and a lot of other events. We have a partnership with AS Monaco, soccer. Uh, so they are doing a lot. Uh, in the luxury, there is a yachting track after in the in the master. Maybe you, I don't know if you are aware of it. So uh, the master in luxury are doing the yacht show, very, very uh, participating actively in the yacht show in the Monaco Fashion Week. A lot of different events like that in Monaco. Uh, international finance is another specialization, which is uh, one term, uh, and then students usually go into internship if one of, in one of the 80 financial institutions that we have in Monaco. So this is an industry which is quite very developed in Monaco, and we have specific agreement with, uh, with this um, in, industry in Monaco. And there is a third year, which is a bit specific, the Monaco Banking and Financial Services. So this is our third year, which is an apprenticeship program. This apprenticeship program uh, allows students to work, uh, you know, throughout one year uh, in a bank in Monaco. They have a kind of priority uh, to enter the Monaco, whatever their origin are and their visa are, as far as they are students in Monaco. They need to speak French and uh, they, um, they, they are working three days a week in the bank. And then Thursday and Friday, they come to the university to study and then they, they, they have a, 
a third year degree. This program is open to our bachelor students that did the first two years with us, but as well, it's uh, you know uh, welcome uh, for uh, BTS, EUT, associate degree students from the area as well. Uh, so I am done with this. Um, general overview just a little introduction about how classes are organized you know because then we go a bit more uh, you know into details and that may be some of the questions for after uh, we are um, organized around uh, per term uh, three modules of class and each modules have three classes Co grade can compensate in a module okay so during the first semester when you arrive in september for example or in january but let's say in september you do the business fundamental so basically uh, we have the external factor of the business with the first module which is international business and market we have an introduction to business in general uh, an introduction to economy and an introduction to marketing there is always one module of functional business knowledge the second module it's more linked to skills you know soft skills transversal skills we call it so the first term is preparation you know of the academic life uh, learning mathematics uh, you know and resting a bit some quantitative skills and some it skills and you can choose and start a new language uh, when you arrive at the international university of monaco the possibility are french and it's the most used of course uh, we have as well italian russian spanish and chinese these are the languages you can start. And finally, you can choose one of the two uh, track, as we mentioned before. And uh, if you do the management track, you do microeconomic and international relations. And in the marketing and communication track, you do advertising and symbols and computer graphics. And this is one term. Each class are three hours of uh, class per, uh, of course, per week. So you have around, you know, 21 to 25 hours of class per week over 10 to 15 weeks it depends on the week sometimes there is a bit less or a bit more classes and um, classes starts at 8 13 in the morning and finishes at seven o'clock in the evening normally with 25 hours of class per week usually or you can start at 8 30 one day but uh, another day you may have your morning free or the afternoon free you know uh, you are not in the university from eight in the morning to seven in the evening five days a week we are open to Monday from Monday to Friday, uh, of course, and students use the university, you know, to, to interact in project. The new facilities, you know, uh, we have some, some meeting rooms, some students lounge area, because it's important that the students can, uh, can interact and do their group work, you know, uh, all together in the facilities. So that was the first term of the class. Uh, the second term, we are going to speak a bit about uh, management. So the internal factor of the business, as you can see, we have uh, always this first uh, module, which is the functional business knowledge. We have the transversal skills, and then we have the business management or the communication track module. And comes during the second term, this honors track with these additional classes for students that decide to try to do the honors tracks. The idea is as it is additional classes, we make a selection to, uh, you know, have people joining this honors track. And uh, we are asking uh, above 80 out of 100 in the, in the first term average to enter this honors track. Second year uh, starts um, with uh, this um, semester free at IOM in fall if you decide to leave in January. Uh, this uh, semester free uh, is one of the capstone area for the program. We are speaking about tomorrow economy, the next economy, disruptive business model, uh, digital, uh, sorry, something changed. I am coming back to the, to the slide. Okay. I don't see any more the Button. Yes. So, uh, next economy. So, disruptive business model tomorrow. Uh, digital economy. Uh, the consumer behavior linked to that, and of course the development, uh, the sustainable development area, which is linked to it as well. So, it's very important. We have still these um, soft skills leading to a responsible business leader, and the two tracks. Okay, and of course the honors track starts becoming a bit more intense uh during the this term uh, second year uh, 
the term after that you go abroad and uh, Jeanne Marie, uh, which is in charge of uh, the student abroad and, and this uh, international track, maybe will um, be able to explain you a bit how it works and uh, who are our partner universities. Jeanne Marie, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, so um, yeah, during your second year, you will need to uh, go abroad for one semester. So you will be able to choose between fall semester or spring semester. And uh, I will help you to choose your university, to, uh, to make the application, everything. Uh, basically, here you can see um, some of the university that we have partnership with, but we have much more. Uh, for example, you can see we have Russia, we have also North America with Suffolk University in Boston, we have Mexico, we have Argentina, well, plenty of universities. We also have Asia with Japan, China, uh, South Korea, so you will have a lot of choices. And uh, all our partner universities, uh, they are worldwide. So in Europe, uh, Asia, North America, South America. And uh, as I tell you, uh, well, basically, I will be your point of contact for the study abroad semester, and I will help you to choose and, uh, and uh, decide and, uh, yeah. I don't Thank know. you, Jeanne-Marie. Maybe a little word about how it is articulated. So when the student chooses to go abroad, then how do we decide uh, how, who goes where? Yeah, sure. So uh, during your first semester uh, at IUM, uh, I will go in class and I will explain you all the details and all the application process. So basically what uh, we do is that uh, our partner universities have requirements. They have specific requirements. And uh, one of the requirements is based on the final average. Okay. So uh, you will need to make sure to have the best final average during your first semester in order to be accepted in the, in the best uh, universities that we have. And, um, and yeah, and we also have, as uh, Patrice Sargenti said earlier, we also have uh, universities from the insect group uh, because we, we are a huge group. So there are a lot of campuses. So we, you will have also possibilities to, uh, to join one of our uh, insect group universities. So as Patrice said, uh, for example, London or Paris and, uh, and maybe very soon, uh, San Francisco. Thank you, Jeanne-Marie. So um, yeah, I, I saw the chat. So yes, it is compulsory to answer one, uh, to, to, um, to go one term abroad. Yes. Huh? Um, we have another question uh -huh. in the study abroad. We have a question. Is it possible to choose a university that IUM may not currently have a partnership with, but could provide courses that might be credited at IUM? Uh, no, unfortunately, it's not possible. You will need to go abroad in one of our partner universities, but uh, if you know a very good university, uh, and that you would be interested in going in this university, I definitely invite you to contact me because uh, I may create a partnership with this university. So it may, it may take several months to create a partnership, but uh, it's not impossible. We are always trying to create new partnerships so that you have um, an important choice uh, of uh, countries and universities to choose from. So yeah, definitely just tell me if you have some contacts and uh, I will make sure to, I will do my best to create a partnership. Thank you, Jeanne-Marie. Uh, we, we move on with the presentation then. Uh, but we have only one term left uh, because, um, okay, we have the semester five. It's more towards strategy. Uh, a strategic thinking and uh, we go through the specialization so we have the first functional knowledge module which is uh, linked to global business strategy leadership entrepreneurship there is a, a business uh, simulation uh, game and there is a business plan competition during this term here and uh, the professional and the practitioners that are here you know that comes for the jury of the business plan competitions our business angels, we we are uh, we know in the area. They are even coming from Milan uh, to um, you know to to give their feedback to the students 
uh, and it leads since we have a partnership with uh, Monaco Tech, which is uh, the incubator of Monaco for startup. It leads to potential, uh, you know, uh, space and, and spot in, in this incubator. So this is quite uh, very good. And uh, as mentioned before, we have these uh, specializations, uh, which are, you see, three classes per specialization during one term. So it's not <coughs> a master, it's an, an introduction to a specialty in order to be able to choose the, you know, the internship in the field of your specialization and to confirm that uh, everything is okay and everything is aligned to uh, go to the, um, to the master of your choice. This is what we call the convergence process. Uh, we start first year, it's very generic, and then slowly with all the internships you can do, and uh, the specialization, and then the, the, the compulsory internship at the end during your last term of studies. Normally with the master, you are sure about the master you choose, and then you could go to the, to, to, to the, the job market with, uh, let's say, uh, a bit more power, uh, being more efficient in your job because you like what you do and you know that uh, you are efficient. And normally, uh, once everything works well for the five years of studies, uh, then uh, it leads to, uh, you know, we call that a, an accelerator of career. Okay. Uh, I'm done the presentation this, uh, of the program. Yes, Diana. Uh, someone is asking if it's possible to take what, more than one specialization during the third year. No. Uh, it's only one specialization uh, because otherwise it won't fit in the schedule. Huh? Normally, you choose the specialization you would like to to test for your master. Huh? That's the idea uh, to see if you can cope and this, if this interests you. But in all the case, then if you don't like it, you can go to another master. That's not a problem. Or if you just finally understand that uh, this is not exactly what you, you expected. Uh, it is not because you do a luxury specialization that you cannot do the master in finance, for example. No, not at all. Uh, yeah. It is still generic and all the core courses required to go to the master, uh, general master, are in, in the first two years. So, uh, and, and in the module seven here. So you, you, you definitely uh, can choose your specialization freely uh, in order to have, you know, validation of your bachelor and then to, to then go to, the, to your master when you want. Okay. <clears throat> we continue. Now I will uh, leave the floor to uh, Maureen, which is in charge of the career services. Thank you, Patrice. So good morning, everybody. Um, as uh, Patrice said, I'm uh, working within the career services at IUM. More specifically, uh, um, I'm the internship coordinator for all the students and I take care of all the official events of IUM. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to change the slide, yes, one sec. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we can... Oh, ah, I come, I take the, the ownership, L leave me the, okay. the one. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, so just so you know what we offer in terms of internship and job search support, we have different levels based on the program you're doing. So of course we start from the bachelor level on the um, very bottom of the pyramid. We do career counseling, so each of the students who wish to actually discuss their career objectives, their uh, CV, cover letter, LinkedIn profile, how to look for an internship, what is the best strategy to approach companies. They can do one-to-one -one sessions with me or Mrs. Sophie De Lorenzo, the director of the career services. We're always available for our students. We book meetings and we discuss together the different uh, topics they need to do to cover. Of course, we do in-class uh, career seminars with uh, professional headhunters who actually explain how to have a good CV, how to have a good cover letter, how to have a strong LinkedIn profile as well, because nowadays having a LinkedIn profile, it is an essential tool that you need to have in place um, for your in future applications. A lot of companies now use this tool. We help you guys setting up your career goal objectives through seminars in class. We have also self-selling techniques, how to put yourself out there and how to present yourself, how to have a good elevator pitch, how to know how to simply sell yourself. 
You have three internship opportunities throughout your bachelor degree. We will cover that maybe later. Um, we organize every year for our students our international business days. I have a slide coming up next, so we'll tell you all about it, but it's a very um, big event we organize every year. We uh, over 60 companies, and I'll cover that in my next slide. We organize several business plan competition, as Patrice uh, was explaining earlier. Um, and we have also business conferences pretty much once a month with top executives who are coming in and discussing very specific topic um, for different industries. So one month it could be on finance, the next it could be on something related to luxury, and then the next month it could be something related to sports management. Just so you know, when we move on to the master level, there is a bit of an upgrade in the pro services we provide. So of course, all the services from the bachelor level are provided. And then on a master level, you have a career coaching from an industry headhunter who's actually specialized. So each uh, master program has a special headhunter um, who's there to help them work on their CV, their cover letter, to have exactly the right tools that are oriented for the industry uh, they're targeting. We have profile books, which are um, documents we use to sell our students for, to companies. So basically, short cards of yourself where you explain where, uh, the languages you speak, your previous uh, education, your previous experience, and your professional objectives. We have business, business consulting projects as well. So real projects given by companies. Our students become consultants for the companies, and then they uh, work on solutions for them. We have a course also specifically on networking techniques uh, to help our students know how to introduce themselves because sometimes it is difficult to go and put yourself out there and present yourself. And then we have a networking cocktail for our master students and MBA, as well as alumni to actually help them put that in practice. On an MBA level, uh, very quickly, we have an individual mentoring with a special career coach um, they do also strategic business consulting uh, and they have, uh, of course, a dedicated career coach who sits down once a week with them to, um, to figure out everything. Um, so, hopla. can we put back the presentation on, please? Okay. So, um, because I take care of events also at IUM, I just want to quickly explain to you guys what are the other big events we organize at IUM. We have uh, every two years the Monaco Symposium on Luxury, which is one of uh, our biggest events in terms of academic research. We invite the best researchers, uh, prof uh, professors, who do actually research on the field of luxury to come to IUM and present their papers and explain to us uh, what are the next trends in the future of luxury, uh, whether it is on uh, product development, marketing strategy, and so on and so forth. We have also professionals and uh, top CEOs from companies coming and giving business presentations as well. So we mix the research and academic world to the business and professional world, combining them together in one big event. Our master and luxury students are invited to attend this event as well, uh, so that they have a, an aspect, they, they see both aspects uh, in one event. Moving on to uh, my next slide. Hopla. So, also coming back to the business plan competitions that we organize, we have two every year one which is the Monaco Ocean Protection Challenge dedicated, of course, to the protection of the oceans in partnership with the Museo Sonographique and Monaco Impact. We have another competition, which is the Mark Challenge, which is our biggest business plan competition, uh, where this year, it's, it was supposed to be in May due to the coronavirus, we moved it to July. Uh, we have 75 teams coming from 16 countries, a total of 234 students participating, from over 33 business schools. As you can see among the business schools, we have renowned business schools such as Bocconi, Louis, Polytechnico, London Business School. And these teams um, so present a project which is 
meant to shape the future of luxury. So it needs to be related to actual, actually either a service or a product related to the luxury industry. And our bachelor and master students, as well as MBA and alumni can participate to this competition. There are different uh, categories. And uh, then we have awards uh, given and the jury are composed of um, personalities and business angels as well. Moving on back, to coming back to the International Business Days. So this is one big event that we organize every year. It's a three days event where we invite over 60 companies to come to IUM and present their company, present the next tendency of the industries. Um, we organize, so our students shape their own program and they decide which uh, conferences they want to attend. We have either industry conferences, we have also practical workshops, for example, on how to build a strong CV, how to have a good uh, LinkedIn profile, how to build a video CV, for example, finding an internship abroad. Those are the types of practical workshops that we organize as well. Uh, we also have either speak based dating sessions, so short 10 minutes interviews with companies, or on-campus recruitment with companies who are coming to actually recruit for internship. So we tell our students usually this is the right uh, moment to actually start and look for their internship concretely. Um, to give you an idea, among the companies who came this year, we had Versace, we had uh, Gucci, uh, we had in finance Julius Baer, we had uh, in sports management uh, we Adidas, so just to give you a few names, of course, there's 60, so there's many more, but this is just to give you an idea of the few brands that came this year. Um, unfortunately, due to the coronavirus this year, we had less companies attending physically, but we turned actually the event into a digital event. So a lot of companies presented uh, the, their companies online and did interviews through Skype online as well. So we were able to turn the, the event into a um, semi-digital event with the Skype presentations from companies. Okay. Um, just so you have a quick overview of the top 20 internship employers of 2019, we have a lot of local companies such as SBM Offshore, which is in oil and gas, we have Bluebell, which is located in South Korea, um, who's a um, retailer of a premier, uh, premium um, luxury goods. Uh, we have Bank uh, Julius Baer, located in Monaco, private banking. We have Fraser, who's uh, in yachting industry, Monaco Mediax, event management, Unite, HR, and Silver Sea in cruising. So those are the top recruiters from 2019. Of course, they vary from year to year, but more or less, they stay the same. Uh, among others recruiter, you may recognize, of course, there's Louis Vuitton, Gucci, UBS, BNP, Adidas, Engel and Volkers. So those are all the brands uh, who recruited. There's many, many more, but just to give you an idea of who are the brands who come and recruit IM students for internships. All right, okay. In terms of industries, very quickly, of course our students go in the industries of the specializations we propose. Uh, primarily luxury, uh, because of Monaco's location and because of our students' interest. Finance, event management, professional services, and sports management. To be noted is that 61% of our students complete an internship in Monaco. All our students who are under 27 are actually allowed to do an internship in Monaco whatever is their nationality. So this is something to keep in mind. Now, the question is always um, for the after the bachelor program. Should I continue studying or should I go and work? This is a dilemma that we have every year. Students from the third year usually come and see me with these doubts. And before I try to answer that question, I just want to give you the figures from last year, what our students did last year. So in the bachelor program, we had 124 students who graduated in June 2019. Among these 124 students, we have 80 who actually decided to continue with a master's degree. 
and two thirds of them stayed at IUM. So I would say about 50 of them stayed at IUM for a master either in finance, international management, luxury or marketing. The others went to other universities. You have the list just down here. Uh, as you can see, uh, they went to also very well-renowned universities. For the ones who decided to work, so not to continue with their studies, we have 44 students who decided to continue with a professional career, 37 who concretely had a job the day they received their diploma. So in June 2019, when they went on stage, they already had a job. And 25 of them actually decided to stay in Monaco and pursue a uh, professional career and actually managed to get a uh, job in Monaco. In terms of salary for a bachelor degree, they uh, average at 25K per year. Um, and actually 7% of our students who decided to continue with a professional career decided to go on and become entrepreneurs. So they are actually uh, helped out with uh, the uh, local incubators in Monaco, Monaco Tech, Monaco Foundry and uh, they are actually pursuing their own uh, business. So coming back to the question to study or to work, there is no right or wrong answer ultimately, but it depends, I would say, on your professional objectives. If the idea is to work into finance, I would definitely recommend to continue with a master's degree in finance. Why? Because most of the financial institutions, they do require a master in finance to pursue a meaningful career. Now, if you're looking into becoming an entrepreneur and you feel that the bachelor degree gave you all the, the knowledge you needed, then maybe a master degree is not necessary. If you feel like you want more information and you want before starting your business, you want to have a more broad uh, idea of what uh, topics you may need, then you can move on with a master in international management, which has a, an entrepreneurial flavor. So, no right or wrong answer it depends on you our job is to help you out and figure out what is the right answer for you very quickly so coming back to the students who actually continue and work uh, these are the positions you can expect um, as we said 45 percent of them stayed in monaco in positions such as sales associate marketing coordinator digital marketing real estate community manager uh, logistics, account manager. So a lot of the jobs now are very much digital. So the, the careers in marketing in digital are very trendy at the moment. Uh, just quickly, a few of the brands who hired their students last year, KPMG with auditing, V-Ships uh, with the shipping industry, Amazon business to say, we all know what Amazon is doing, okay. Uh, Societe Generale for the branding, Edmond de for the private banking aspect, Banana Moon with fashion, uh, the Yacht Club of Monaco uh, into the yachting industry, Monaco Mediax for event management. So these are just a few of the brands, of course, but some of the brands that you may recognize. Last but not least, uh, we have, as Patrice said earlier, 3,300 students, uh, well, alumni uh, worldwide, 25% of them are in Monaco and the rest are spread uh, around the world. Our alumni are very much keen to help our students and get in touch and give advice and giving back to the IUM community. So um, you can get in touch with them as well. They will also be very happy to answer any questions you may have. I'm uh, reaching the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, if there's no questions, for me right now, I'm still, I will still be available afterwards for the Q&A session and I leave the floor now back to Patrice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maureen. We are going now to move to the admission process to understand how you can uh, apply to, to join us. So Diana, which is in charge of the admission of the bachelor, is going to present briefly uh, how to apply. So hello everyone. So uh, as I recognize a lot of the names on the attendees, a lot of you already started to join the process. So you have to go on our website, monaco.edu. You have to click on the apply online session, uh, the red button, and then you will be asked to fill some information like your email address, your postal address, all the information we could need, your high school attend, um, your school you attended. 
And then after you have to pay 50 years of application fee directly by credit card on the platform. And also you have to upload the required documents. So for the documents, we will need a copy of your ID. We will need uh, a digital picture and also your high school transcripts. The documents we accept must be in English or in French. Uh, and we are only asking for the high school transcripts from the, from the last two years of the high school transcripts. So of course, if you don't have your diplomas yet, you cannot put it. Um, now with the coronavirus situation, it could be complicated to have your high school transcripts. So just send us whatever you have and we'll manage to, to assess it like this. Then after when we receive your file, we'll, receive, we'll send you an email of confirmation and we'll organize the motivation interview with Mr. Sargenti. So it could be done normally face to face, but not during this period, by phone or by Skype. And usually it's done within one or two weeks maximum. Uh, after that, we have juries once a month. So you have the answer directly by email, uh, normally on a Friday. Okay. A lot of students are asking themselves what kind of profile we are searching for. Uh, we are really searching for unique students. So first of all, the academic ability is very important. We want to see if you can perform academically. We also want to see if you have um, relevant personal, professional education experience, who you are, what you have done. All, this, all these informations are very important to us so we can really put a profile next to the grades because when we only see the grades, sometimes we don't understand what's happening. So if you're, I don't know, open your own company, did you manage to open a charity? All these informations are very important. And also you will have some Q&A answers that you have to provide us before the interview. And this will really show, you, uh, show us your motivation. Motivation is really one of the, I think most important criteria uh, for our admission. Uh, then we're also going to check leadership potential, personal achievements and interests. Do you like to, I don't know, trend, uh, to trade some money on, the, on, on Bitcoins or you, do you like to go to events? This is very important to us because maybe we can do something with it because we are really such students who are fitting our requirements and also we want to fit your requirements in terms of university. So it's really uh, a two-way street. We really want to satisfy both of the of the sides. And also we want uniqueness and contribution to the university mission. We want unique students. Uh, so we are usually having between 150 and 160 students and I don't want to have two times the same person. So we only want unique persons and Alain is the best, uh, best example for that as he's very unique. Um, on the next slide, you will, uh, you'll now be able to ask all the questions you want. I already have a couple of them from the chat and thank you very much for your questions. They were very interested. interesting. Please don't hesitate to answer, to put them now on the chat and I will just answer them. So the first question we have is for Jeanne-Marie. It's about accommodation. So maybe Jeanne-Marie, you can speak a little bit about accommodation for IUM. Yeah, that's a very interesting question, accommodation. Um, yeah, this is okay. Um, yeah, so basically uh, we have about na between 90 and 95 percent of our students who live in France, quite close to Monaco, for example, in Beausoleil, Cabdai, uh, Rogoni Saint Martin. Uh, but now, since this year, uh, it's a little bit different. Now we have some students who live, for example, more in Nice, uh, because now that the university moved uh, close to the train station, we are about one minute walk. To the train station so it's quite easy to commute every day uh, for example from Nice or from Menton so it opened a lot of possibilities for you to find an accommodation uh, in your budget okay yeah so um, now uh, so I'm in charge of helping you to find uh, an accommodation so at IUM we have different uh, solutions to find an accommodation the first solution is the platform Studapart. It's a student housing platform. We have a partnership with this platform. And on this platform, it's uh, very secure for you to uh, look for an apartment, to discuss with the landlords, uh, also to pay the first month of rent, for example. So uh, it's quite easy for you and for the landlord uh, on this platform. 
Uh, we also have a Facebook group that is dedicated to, um, to accommodation. The name of the Facebook group is IUM Housing. And on this Facebook group, you will find a lot of accommodations close to Monaco. Um, on this group, we have uh, alumni students, we have private landlords, we have uh, agencies, and uh, we also have uh, all the new students. So what I do is that um, I contact all of you when you are admitted uh, and then enrolled at IUM. I contact you and I give you the links uh, of Studaport and of the Facebook group so that you can join the group and that you can see uh, all the messages. You can also add a message on the Facebook group to say exactly what you're looking for. For example, I don't know, I'm looking for uh, an apartment to share in Beausoleil and this is my budget. And then you will have uh, agencies or landlords or other students who are leaving their apartment at the end of uh, June who will answer your question and they will tell you, oh yes, uh, you can rent this apartment. So it's quite helpful. There is the last solution, which is uh, the real estate agencies, of course. So if you want to know what are those agencies, you can just contact me and I will give you the name, the links of their websites, and you will see plenty of uh, accommodation offers. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, the next question is actually still for you because it's about visa. So maybe you can answer questions about visa. Yes. Uh, so of course, uh, the same that for accommodation. Uh, as soon as you are admitted at IUM, I will contact you. And if you need to apply for a visa, I will give you the exact uh, process. I will help you uh, to uh, apply for your visa. So it's only for non-EU citizens that you will need to apply for a visa. If you are French, Italian, uh, German, you don't need to have a visa to study in Monaco, okay? If you need to have a visa, you will have two possibilities. It will depend on where you want to live. If you want to live in Monaco, you will need to apply for a student visa for Monaco. If you want to live in France, you will need to apply for a visitor visa for France. Okay, so the first question to ask yourself is, where do I want to live? And then I will detail you, uh, when I will contact you, the, uh, the exact process. And you will need to apply from your country of residence. Yeah, just, just, I was just explaining that uh, the best is to uh, apply for the visa about three months before coming uh, to Monaco so that you have enough time and that you make sure that you have it on time. That's it. Perfect. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Diana, do we have additional questions? Uh, yes, thank God I wrote them. Um, so we have another question on living expenses. Anne-Marie, also, can you? Sure. Okay. Um, so we that's, have a slide, yes. Yeah, that's a, a question that many uh, students ask is, uh, um, what's the price uh, of, an, of an apartment uh, in Beausoleil or etc.? Um, so, as you can see, you have some differences depending on where you live. That's why earlier I explained that um, it's, uh, it's very interesting now that, we, that the university is close to the train station because you see that, for example, if you live in Nice, uh, the accommodations are much cheaper that, uh, than if you live, for example, in Monaco. Okay, and uh, Nice is about 20, 25 minutes train from Monaco. So it's very easy to commute every day. But if you want to live close to Monaco, that's a very good option as well. And you can see uh, that the average rent price for an apartment in Beausoleil is uh, 850 euros. It's really an average. It will depend on many things. For example, if you are okay to share an apartment, uh, it, it will be cheaper, of course. Okay. Uh, also, um, some uh, interesting um, prices for example for the train you see that it's about a hundred euros a year so it's it's quite cheap and you can travel everywhere uh, in uh, in nice in uh, Menton. you know it's, it, it's very interesting also the food so that's an average price a month uh, also uh, insurances 50 euros a month or also the cell phone so you can see that the prices uh, for food cell phone all these things are not more expensive than uh, in France for example okay
Okay, thank you very much. We have another question on tuition fees. Uh, so the tuition fees for the bachelor's program are around 12,000 euros a year. Uh, maybe, yes, we have a slide. It's a three-year um, program, so it's 12,000 per year. And then you can see down here you have some options of payments. So you have option A, option B, option C with different dates, which will give you time to, um, to really have more time to pay. And you can also give us your own payment schedule if this is okay for you. I mean, if you prefer to pay by month or every two months, you just give us your own uh, payment schedule and the payment committee will, will, will assess it. So if you have further questions concerning tuition fees, don't hesitate to ask them on the chat. I have another question um, on the internships. Uh, maybe Martin can, um, can... Mate, this is so fucked up. Uh, so for the internships, uh, I'm not sure if Marine is back. Marine, are, are you here? Yes, she's here. She's up, she's here. Yes, sorry. Um, so for the internships, as I said earlier, throughout your uh, studies at IUM, you have, uh, throughout the bachelor, you have three internship options. So as you can see, year one, you have a fall and spring of courses. And summer uh, of your first year, you have your first optional internship. Same goes for second year, you have fall and spring of classes. And then summer of your second year, you have a second optional internship. Now, if you choose the honors track, the first or second optional internship has to be your first optional internship. Um, the honors track has two compulsory internships one taking place in summer one or summer two and uh, the regular track has only one compulsory internship which is in spring of your third year so then year three we have fall of classes with your specialization courses and in spring you have your compulsory internship whether you're in the regular track or in the honors track now if you decide to continue at IUM with a master's degree, you have the opportunity to do a bridge internship between your bachelor and your master. So depending if you've done the regular track, you'll have the opportunity to do a three-month internship from uh, July to uh, beginning of September and then resume your courses. If you've done an honors track and the program for the master's degree that you've chosen has the option to start in January, you'll be able to do a six months internship. And just quickly on the master degree level, you have fall and spring of classes and one last compulsory internship to graduate. Thank you, Marine. We have actually a question which is for Marine and Jeanne-Marie at the same time, because it's, if I have a student visa for Monaco, can I still apply for internships in France? So maybe Jeanne-Marie can answer this question. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, is if I have a student visa for Monaco, can I still apply for internships in France? Y yes, there's absolutely no problem. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so moving on, we have another, uh, we have a couple of questions on the coronavirus. Uh, so maybe I will let Patrice uh, answer them if it's possible. So maybe you can explain us a little bit uh, how did we manage this uh, particular situation of the coronavirus? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, uh, we 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 had to close the the facilities, and we decided even to close uh, one day before they asked us to close. Um, and uh, we used this, uh, let's say, special time to to switch online. The, the good point was that we were ready uh, to, to teach online and uh, we have already all the tools, uh, you know, set for the digital experience of the students. Uh, all the course material were already online. Most of the library material were online and, uh, and, and, and all the professors were, were equipped, of course, uh, by us with computers that uh, included all these tools we are using. So basically, uh, well, there was a kind of, uh, you know, first days of, uh, you know, uh, heating, but uh, it seems that uh, it's, it's going well. Uh, we are we are quite organized, and it's it's a good point to to, to move and to to improve. Uh, in fact, uh, teaching online, we were always saying yes, we need to do some classes online um, 
but we, we, we did some trial, but we never, never did it really. So it was the opportunity uh, to, to, do, to do it. And uh, I think it's good, uh, Alain, um, you, you are following some classes online, I think, this, uh, this, these days, because you were in my class yesterday afternoon. So uh, <laughs> I know. So how is it going? Yeah, it's going fine so far. I'd say the, um, yeah, the teacher, they explain it live through Zoom or through Skype, which is sharing a screen, doing a presentation. And um, students, they can interact by talking through the microphone or chatting. And I think it's going okay. Yeah, thank you. So, so I, I definitely think that uh, it's, it's not a problem. We do as well quizzes online. And, uh, and I hope with this uh, coronavirus problem that we will be able to have uh, the final exam in class. Okay, so we, we, we still target to reopen in May. Uh, maybe not before, uh, to be honest, but uh, so in May, I think that we should be uh, able to do a final exam in class and then to start again a, a normal life. But I really think and I am convinced that this uh, experience was an opportunity to, to improve and to change uh, some habits. And I, I'm, I'm sure we, we are going to use that in the future. So there's actually two other questions related to the coronavirus. There's one about the deadlines, uh, about the application. So for sure, we are going to postpone all the deadlines of admission. Yes, of course. Yes, uh, for admissions. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So everything has been postponed to end of June for now. And like this, it will give you more time. But actually, we are completely fine. We are working fine. So we are doing all the process and we are continuing the process. So now that you're home, that you have time, you can send us your application. We will, we will, um, we will actually uh, answer that uh, directly by email and by Skype. So no worries about the deadlines. We've just pushed them all to June 30th. But uh, as you're all confined home, maybe it's the best time to send your application. And there's another question about the coronavirus for maybe Patrice, because some of the students are asking themselves, should they postpone the intake from September to January, as we have a January intake, maybe? I don't think it's needed. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty convinced that, uh, yeah, before the summer, we will be back, uh, back and running, and we will have a normal intake in September. This is a uh, 99% sure, so I, I don't think it's, uh, it's good to wait, because then you will, you, you will lose a bit of time uh, for, which is not, I think, needed. In, 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 as we are doing now, I, 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 I'm not, I don't think we will need to go online, but uh, even, even though you, you, if you, you, you will be able to postpone later on, in fact. But I think that for the moment, it's better to start in September as, a, as if everything will be okay, as I, I'm pretty sure it will be okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. We have another um, question on um, the internships so what are the extra costs for all the internships so there is no cost at IUM uh, for you to do an internship it's integrated in your uh, tuition fees now the extra cost you may have is if you decide to go and do an internship abroad and you need to get accommodation you need to get your visa your daily life expenses those are the type of extra costs that you may have if you decide to do your internship abroad in a different country, for example. But in terms of costs from IUM, there is no cost. I just want to make something very precise. Um, it is the student's job to find their internship. IUM provides all the tools to help you out finding an internship, but we will not be placing you guys into an internship with a given company. Um, we do not provide this kind of service, first of all, because we feel like finding an internship is a learning in process itself. Once you will graduate, you will have to find a job and it will be your responsibility to find a job as well. So it is really a learning process as well. We're giving all the tools to our students to actually find their internship through weekly job listing, counseling sessions as much as possible, um, putting them in relations with companies. Then if students are really struggling, we do one-to-one -one and try to place them but it's really the last option. Um, so first of all, we want you guys to try and finding an internship before uh, intervening. Okay, thank you very much, Marine. So thank you all the attendees for the questions. This is very good. So we have a question maybe for Mr. Sargenti. Is it possible to transfer previous courses credits to your school? If possible, with which previous school credits do you accept? 
Ah, well, we cannot hear you, Patrice, I think. Um, is it okay now? Is it okay? It's okay now. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, no so we, um, it's it's the normal process of uh, university transfer students. Huh? So uh, we do. Uh, there is two types. Either you have already an associate degree, so another degree. So that gives you a, a standard level, so a two-year degree, for example. So you can join the third year. But most of the transfer students, you know, try to transfer during in the middle of their studies. So uh, what we have to do is that we have to go through your credits. We accept US credits, ECTS credits, of course. Uh, and we try to see if there is a meaning, you know, having you joining directly on the second year, if you don't lack, you know, some of the prerequisite subjects. Huh? Uh, be because our first year is really diverse and is the foundations of a lot of different theory. Some students that were in economy, um, did only economy and uh, they did not do marketing. So it, there is no way you can join the second year if you did not do uh, some marketing class to understand the roots of this discipline. So uh, we, we do a case by case, you know, in-depth analysis of your current transcript. We need to see your grade uh, and the credit you received and, and the grade, it's important. Uh, and then we, we give you the possibility to come on the first term, the second term, the third term or the third year. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Saranti. Welcome. A lot of questions on scholarships, and I will be able to answer that directly. So indeed, we are offering merit-based scholarship. Uh, the scholarship is an application you have to do online directly from our platform, from, from our website. You just send us the application by email. It can be done during admissions or later on, but it has to be done before we start classes in September. And it's from 1,000 euros to 5,000 euros that are deductible directly from the tuition fees. Uh, please know that this scholarship will only be done on the first year. It will not be repeated on the second year and the third year. It's just a little help uh, to, for you to come to, to the university. And there's no deadline specifically to send this, this scholarship. It just has to be done before September. Um, I think that's all. After you can also, because there's another question about all the available scholarships, this is a scholarship we are offering. You can also contact all the governmental uh, scholarships from your own country, because usually there's a lot of scholarships from the Ministry of Education, from the government, maybe your parents' companies that, that we don't really know, so you have to dig a little bit on, 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 on your countryside. Uh, we also have another question, Mr. Sargenti, for you. Do summer school is still maintained? Ah, summer school, uh, we, we can discuss about, um, we have a slide, hold, hold on. Um, the, the summer school, we have two types of summer schools. Huh? We have the, the management school, you know, with uh, one about entrepreneurship and innovation, one about luxury, one about finance. Uh, for the moment, we will do as if it is, uh, Normally, yes, they, are, they will be maintained. Um, and we have this other program here uh, with two possibilities, preparing the TOEFL or uh, improving your, um, your English for uh, younger people. Uh, this one, sure, they will stay because they are in July. Some of the other summer school we mentioned at the beginning uh, are in June, so we are, we are not sure. Normally, uh, at least we will be able to operate, uh, to my mind, but uh, maybe we won't have uh, the students, you know, because uh, they, are, they may not want to travel. Uh, usually, these uh, summer school re related to business, eh? not the preparation of the TOEFL or the English, uh, are set to welcome students from other institutions, from other universities. And due to the situation, it's highly probable that the other universities still need their students to pass the exam during the summer or something like that. So we, we cannot really anticipate too much uh, about how we will be able to operate. But for the moment, we are operating as if it was maintained. Okay, there was another question on the English requirements. So actually, uh, after the English, uh, the motivation interview with Mr. Sargenti, uh, you have different options. You can, or, or you made an IB uh, diploma, or you went to a school which was English uh, native. So we are not going to ask any requirements. If you have a test, a TOEFL, the IELTS, also, this will be done. Otherwise, for those who don't have any, any tests or, or, or English diploma, we are going to organize, after the admission, an interview with a uh, native English professor, which was, was going to be by Skype, by for 30 minutes max, and it's going to give us a good assessment of your level of English. So, also, she will be able to give you 
uh, tips on what to improve and, and really like if you have to go two months during the summer to, to the UK to uh, improve your English or if it's just, you know, some little exercise to improve. Uh, yes, this, ha this is going to be done after the admissions. So to help you and, and this English summer program during July is a good help for those who, are really, who really need to improve before September. So I hope uh, this answers your questions. I have another question on um, the examples. Maybe Alain can, it's, can give an ex answer to that because some students are asking themselves if you can give them some examples of good projects you're actually doing. Just to uh -huh. give an idea of, of what are the good projects you could be doing as a bachelor student. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, at IUM, there actually there are a whole range of group projects you can do. For example, in class, you can do presentations together or research or something. Those are group projects. Um, with the student association, they also launch group projects where students can you know, partake in that. Um, and I must say, like in general, there are many like lucrative business opportunities uh, in Monaco that you can like identify and partake in uh, in group projects if you. Um, look for them. So I think many projects. Okay, to do. Thank you very much. Uh, as Anna, uh, you are already speaking, there is some questions about maybe your experience at IUM. Maybe okay. you have some pictures to show us um, so you can explain a little bit. What, what is your life at IUM? Okay, cool. Um, okay, yeah. So let me tell you about my personal experience. Um, I say studying here is a unique experience. Like in general, there is a friendly, like uh, family vibe feeling where all students and staff are welcoming and accepting. So this allows everyone to be their authentic self, which creates diverse like business environment. So Monaco is a, like relatively like small place. So you get to know many friends here and business contacts while studying here. So integrating in the community is like quite easily, I'd say it goes quickly. Also because it's so international and, and dynamic and people are always coming and going. So I'd say also, yeah, like networking here at like uh, Monaco and IUM, like it's easy, it's valuable and key. So I'd say that is very good. However, I must say for um, the IUM in Monaco is not for everybody. Like it has to fit your personality. So I would highly recommend, you know, like students to uh, visit Monaco and IUM when the virus like uh, disappears to feel like the environment for yourself to see if you feel comfortable. Um, and you can also reach out to other students on Instagram or to me or something um, and they will help you like show you around. So in my opinion, I'd say like the student life here is very good, you know, with a strong social aspect and many things to keep you busy outside your studies. There are many events like sporting teams we have with university. A different diverse variety of entertainment and excellent nightlife and also like the environment on the French Riviera it's very beautiful with so many like hidden gems to explore however please like know that this can be also a trap for students because there's so much fun here you know in Monaco like you know watch out that you don't get too distracted and maintain focus on your study because the workload is quite manageable but it's really important you stay on top of it meeting your deadlines is key so um, yeah, and also the classes, they're quite small, so you can interact easily with the professors with many uh, le spoken languages among students. Um, yeah, but all classes are giving in English. So yeah, that's my experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. As you're part of the Student Association, I have two questions on that. There's the first question is there, are there any sports clubs at IUM? And also the second one is what extracurricular activities do you offer? Okay. Yeah, so now because of like the corona situation, of course, the sports, we can't proceed. However, after um, when the situation disappears, we're aiming to launch uh, teams in um, like sailing, football, karting. I noticed a uh, football team and stuff um, going on. So there are many like uh, for yoga as well, music. There are many like um, clubs that um, we're going to set up. And the other question was the um, events or other initiatives? Yes, activities, extra activities. Stuff. Are you yeah, having so, trips, parties, stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So like Mr. Sargenti said, there's a partnership with Monaco, uh, Monaco Tech. And um, we wish like to get a business incubator where students can pitch like their ideas and stuff. We've got a, a trading club that's going on. Um, and <clears throat> also um, there are like many events like uh, planning a beach party um, here. And like for the nightclubs, there are also like parties that we're doing. Um, 
and uh, yeah, also we make like uh, deals with local businesses here in Monaco, so students can um, get great discounts and free access to different events. So that's what we do. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, my next question will be for actually myself. Uh, when is the best time to apply for junior high schools? So usually the best time to apply is when you're in your final high school year. We are opening the admissions from September. I mean, if now you want to apply for September 2020, the admissions were open from September 2019, sorry. The best time will be, I think you have to find the right timing before between your classes, your exams, and also, you know, the, the good moment where you can actually, I don't know, give time to the admissions because you have to prepare the documents, you have to prepare the, also the letter of motivation, you also have to get a little bit available for the interview. So I would just recommend you to, to, to take any time between September and June when you have, I would say, one month more calm uh, in terms of activity so you can really devote yourself to, to admissions. So there's no specific time. I think the right timing is the right timing for you. So whenever it's the best for you, you can just start your application. Otherwise, the deadlines are June 30th for this year. Uh, we have another question maybe for Mr. Sargentier, and I think we have a slide on that, about the French requirements for the baccalaureate, as there's a couple of French students attending this webinar. Uh, yes, so, uh, yeah, of course, uh, now well, maybe the, the students that are this year in Terminal does not have this question, but for all the others, the younger, if we have or if we have some parents here, there is this, uh, you know, regular uh, questions uh, coming from the, which kind of um, option shall we choose, which kind of specialty shall we choose for the baccalaureate in order to ensure that uh, we can enter your school. Um, so I, I, this is a proposal, but uh, this proposal has to be put into perspective um, of our population, uh, really, to, to lower a bit the stress level. Uh, you know, we have 18 nationalities for which intake, we have around 60 different nationalities, uh, which is leading to having uh, something like 20 uh, different baccalaureate, high school degree, coming from all over the world. And uh, of course, I can give you some advices in France, but you can understand that if I have a student coming from Korea or coming from Japan or coming from Thailand or uh, Russia, uh, it, it is very diverse, okay? So all the topics that are taught in high school are not exactly the same. A Russian will be very good in mathematics, an American will be very good in communication. So uh, I give you some advices, but these are not, you know, uh, in stone and uh, this is exactly what you have to do. The first question which is recurrent is uh, what about mathematics? Uh, shall we do mathematics to be able to enter your university or in general business school in fact huh? because I am usually doing conferences for uh, as well other uh, people. Uh, so mathematics, uh, the mathematics that are now in the, um, in, in the specialty of the new baccalaureate in France are uh, quite high. Okay, and uh, if we look at the profile of students who are used to have, uh, which are uh, economic and social, the ES series in France uh, now, they, they never do uh, such mathematics. And even the scientific that are finishing this year uh, are, are not going to do, you know, such a detailed mathematics level. So I'm not sure if you are not, uh, you know, fan of mathematics, and with a really scientific um, background uh, that you have to choose this mathematic at least for the two years. You know that you have to choose three in premier and two in terminal. Maybe if you don't want to lose mathematics, because I, I agree it's important to have mathematics, uh, you, you may choose mathematics for premier and then uh, abandon the mathematics for the terminal and take the option math complementaire. This is the first advice I can do, um, but if uh, you are not the best and uh, you don't like uh, really mathematics, you know, don't do it. Uh, we, we have students that are coming from A-levels and IB diploma. Not all the students in their IB diploma or the A-levels choose, you know, mathematics high level. Uh, they, we have students that are, done, that are doing choosing management, uh, business, economy, which some of them are existing in the baccalaureate, but some of them does not exist in France, uh, as we can find in those other high school degrees. So that gives a bit, you know, the perspective about the stress. Uh, it has to be lower because we will restart uh, from the beginning because we have these uh, American students that have to, you know, reach 
the certain level as well uh, as other nationalities. So I will advise as well SES, so Science Economic and Social. Um, history, geopolitics, this is good, uh, very interesting, uh, very linked to business uh, strategic perspective for your future. And then uh, what about language? Uh, it's, it's important and uh, foreign cultures. These are well, uh, as well kind of studies that I would advise. So uh, one of the three uh, or two of the three red boxes or one of the, enfin, the yellow one if you want the mathematics, uh, but uh, don't try, uh, you know, dying to, to pass mathematics till the end because yeah, we are not an engineering school. We don't do, you know, high science. We do mathematics, there is statistics, of course, but we take, we, we start again, uh, in order to have everybody, you know, from the beginning and uh, reaching the same level, okay? So we have actually one girl from Corsica who is uh, asking a specific question on her case. Uh, I'm première and I don't have mathematics. Can I take mathematics complementaire as an option? Is it okay if I have SES and Langue, Literature and Culture étrangère in English? So, uh, for she what I know... Saying, she finished by saying, and this year I also have science politique, but in terminal I will not have it anymore. Okay. So, the, the, for what I know, you cannot take option mathematics in terminal if you did not choose the mathematics in première. This is something uh, I understood in the, in the program. And for the rest of the, your question, I do no problem for me. Uh, whatever you choose, literature, uh, SES or geopolitics, it's okay for me. Okay. Uh, Patrice, I'm sorry, I have another question for you. What is the practical theoretical ratio in percent in your school? Okay, so first of all, let's speak about the, the, the teacher you are facing. You know, one third theoreticians, a PhD, doctorate, and two third practitioners. Uh, some of the professors, I am one of those, you know, I am an engineer, so I'm really practical, but I have a doctorate as well, and I do research. So my classes are, are uh, you know, applied for some and very theoretical for you. In terms of program, I really think that um, it is around 40% theory, a bit less maybe, and 60% uh, apply. It is really experiential education. Huh? And the more we go, the more we ask students to do real projects for real people in real life. And uh, you know, I am completely not uh, you know, ashamed to say, yes, it's applied. Huh? And it, it is preparing you to a real business experience. There is, of course, some theory, but it is the class are down to earth with real professional coming and then asking you to do real projects for real people. Really, so it, it is more applied, uh, definitely. And of course, it's a university, so when it goes to advanced uh, statistics, it's, 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 it's theoretical. Uh, thank you very much, Patrice. Uh, I think we are done with the questions. I will leave two minutes more for the students to write them. Uh, we are going to put a slide with all our email addresses. So if you have any questions, you can just uh, write the email address and write us to Marine directly, to Jeanne-Marie, to Patrice or myself. You also have the email address of the admissions if you have any questions. Uh, this was the first webinar online for us and actually it went quite good. So if you have any tips that what we can uh, improve, please let us know. And we'll also be able to give you back the recording later on, or uh, if you have questions, we can just answer them uh, directly. Uh, I will just wait one more minute to see if there's no questions, but nothing is coming. So I want to thank you all for, for speaking today. Thank you, Patrice. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Jeanne-Marie. And thank you, Alain, for being here and sharing your experience. And uh, I will hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.